hi, my name's Hannah Flint and I'm a primary school teacher, former archaeologist. By the end of today, you'll have learnt a little bit about cave art. You'll have learnt where it was found, when it was created, and some of the interpretations about what cave art was for. Cave art is found in lots of different places outside of Britain. There's very, very few examples of cave art in the British Isles. However, in Europe, there is a vast amount of cave art. We find this especially in caves in France and often in Spain as well. Cave art is also found in Australia and Africa. For you and your class to get the most out of this exercise, it is important that you read the resources that are provided as this will help set it in a wider context. The first thing to do is to introduce cave art to the class and we have provided a series of resources that will help you with this task. First of all, we have some large format images that show details of cave art paintings. You will also find details about how prehistoric people made the pigment they used in their art, along with a document with different interpretations that archaeologists have come up with, which may explain what the art is for. One of the best things about this is because there are lots of different ideas about the use of cave art and what it means, is you and your class can come up with your own interpretations and create your own unique cave art. Now that you have looked at the resources, and shared with your class the cave art pictures. You will be able to start creating your own cave art. For the next step, what you're going to need is lots of paper, lots of paintbrushes, lots of paint. You can make it look more realistic by colouring in the paper brown first, crumpling it up and adding little bits of charcoal to the edges. We've used big rolls of wallpaper in our project. Prehistoric people drew what was familiar to them they drew people, they drew animals, and probably they told stories that made sense of the everyday. And you have to remember there were some extraordinary species in prehistoric times in Britain and Europe, including things like giant deer, mammoth, aurochs, these wild cattle that roamed the, uh, the northern parts of Europe and the northern parts of Britain. And recent studies have shown that cave artists were, in fact, in many ways, better at drawing these animals than modern artists were. That's something that you might find counterintuitive, but it's a fact. This is a chance to think about the fact that these artists literally knew the animals inside out. They lived with them, they hunted them, they ate them. And they utilised these creatures. Every aspect of their bodies was used to make clothes, to make food, to make implements. And they became extremely familiar with them. And that's why the images that you see on cave walls are so elegantly drawn, they're so in proportion, and they're so lifelike. By now your class should have created lots of pieces of cave art, each with its own unique story. This is an opportunity for you to now become archaeologists and interpret each other's work. You could stick the children's artwork up on walls, underneath tables, create a cave out of cardboard boxes, put them up in the reading corner, wherever you think would be best, and get the children to sit either in small groups or as a whole class and interpret each other's cave art. This could lead into a literacy lesson on creative writing where they have to write down each other's stories ideas. This could also lead to a nice piece of drama where they have to act out scenes that are depicted in the cave art. You could use this in a numeracy lesson where you could create tally charts of all the different animals or characters that they see. You could use this in a science lesson where they have to use different materials to create the pigments such as wood, charcoal, mud, clay. Um, crushing up different fruits or vegetables to see if they could create different dyes to create different types of cave art. You could also do a comparison between cave art in Europe and rock art in Britain and see if you could spot any similarities or differences between the two. Now we've reached the end of this exercise. Your children have looked at cave art, produced their own cave art and hopefully will know a little bit more about what life was like during this time period. We hope you found these resources useful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Thank you.